you're interested in, I'll proceed, um, were how, how the fees would be deducted. So um, to try to show some of the options that were spelled out in the email from Howard, I, I print, prepared this scenario. Um, but, but basically, we can do whatever, whatever you'd like. And the scenarios that he presented were um, taking the fees from principal or from income, and what would we recommend? And um, we would actually recommend splitting the fees between income and principal. So <coughs> Howard suggested plan A or plan B. Um, we proposed plan C or D. Um, but we, we can do whatever, whatever, whatever you want. Um, and, and he also suggested that um, they were going to reinvest a portion of income to principal, about 10%. Um, we don't have any clients that do that sort of thing. We can certainly do it because we can set our system to do whatever it is you ask us to do. Um, but, but most people, most municipalities, most nonprofits, um, would, would follow a plan D type of scenario where the fee would be split between income and principal every time the fees were taken. Um, and so I did, if you look under the current beneficiaries and the future beneficiaries, that's sort of how most people look at this sort of endowment accounts. Like you have <coughs> in town, they would consider that the current beneficiaries of these funds pay half the fees and the future beneficiaries pay half the fees and that's why they split those fees between income and principal. Um, so if we were looking at what happened in February, um, February had income of $1,226.32. We had capital gains of $26,723 in February and the fee was um, about $940. So you can see how that breaks down according to each of the fee schedules that, or fee um, breakdowns that we um, reviewed. <clears throat> Ruth, how do, you, how do you treat, with these scenarios, like, how do you treat Gains and losses, both realized and unrealized. Those go to principal. All, all gains and losses in trust accounting are attributed to principal. Okay, but do you do you consider <coughs> how 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 does the how does the fee impact that? So typically, most municipalities, most nonprofits, would take half of the fee from principal. Okay, but the but the gains and losses are not in any way calculated relative to the fee structure, right? No, the gains and losses are relative to what's going on in the market. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay, I just, I, I was just, yeah, the I was just curious as to why even gains and losses were mentioned in there. Just so that you could see that, like a typical month, your gains and losses, typically your gains are going to be greater than your income, typically. Especially now that income rates are so low. Right. Um, we're seeing any boost in value in our accounts, it's all in principle. Well, mostly in principle. Mm -hmm. uh, Ernest. I, I would suggest based on the primary function of our investments is to generate income to offset taxes to certain divisions. 
And by going with any other plan than Plan A, doesn't accomplish that. Okay. We're eating up all the interest, and we're actually losing money in those accounts. So we would have no money to give offset the taxes, and it all stay in the investment. So I, I, I don't think, in my view, we have any choice but to go to Plan A based on the purpose of these accounts is to generate income to offset the, the uh, cemetery budget, for example. And if we need all those dollars up, we got nothing to offset taxes. And these accounts are growing, when they do grow, are growing at a substantial rate, so the loss, the opportunity is there to always continue to grow, basically. is always that crash that could be coming, which would impact that. But that would be a, just a blip, and then everything else would go back on normal. So that would be my recommendation to the board is that in the budget committee that we would stay with plan A just basically because if we don't, we're already losing whatever that number is. Is that the plan that you said most towns have? Most would go with plan D. D. But you can do, I mean, just because everybody else does it doesn't mean we can do whatever it is you fits your needs. Um, did you say D or D? D as in dollar. Delta. Delta. Delta, Delta, Delta Bravo. Thank you. <coughs> Any more discussion? Jack. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, I, I would like to uh, at least tentatively support uh, Ernie's proposal on Plan A. But before I do, I would like to, if I may, with your permission, I'd like to pass out a sheet of paper, some of which doesn't really pertain to what we're discussing, but the first part does. <coughs> and what I try to do in this, this analysis is, is to take the fund value, the unified trust account value, at a million dollars. It's a little bit more than that now, but a million dollars produces some round numbers, and it's a little easier to, to follow. Mm -hmm. And uh, <clears throat> it's not on that basis, it's too far off. If you would, it was just past sort of thing. I think there's enough. I'll take a few more in case you need it. I'd like to uh, have you with a nice bit. Yeah. Hey, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I know, I know you have one. Yep. Mm -hmm. yeah. Basically what I, I'd like to do, I'd like to ask of the Bar Harbor people whether the assumptions that I've listed right at the top make sense, not for this year or next year or any particular year, but in the long, long term. And the assumptions I used for the earnings, the dividends and interest, are three percent and the fund growth inflation if you will of the fund at three percent so a total return of about six percent for four feet i'd like to see if that makes a reasonable sense or if it doesn't make sense i'd like your suggestions of what makes sense as a guide to what the fund should produce in the long run uh, at the, at the first column, I've listed the D.C. Stevens and Richmond Fund, the biggest one, at 500,000, the cemetery at 400,000. These aren't the actual numbers, but they're just approximations, and all other at 100,000 for a million dollars. I took 1% off for the custodian fee, your, your Bar Harbor's fee, and then available to invest. I took 10% off because some of the money is going to be held in cash, and cash doesn't produce anything to speak of currently. So there's a, it produces uh, based on about $890,000. And the earnings and dividends on that would be the 26730 at 3%, and then less than 10% of earnings that we said would, we would leave in the principal. That, that's a town, town policy. So the net earnings for distribution would be $24,000. And on a million dollar fund, that would be 2.4% net return. 
uh, forget about how they're how they're charged, whether to charge to earnings or charged, not charged to earnings. That's a town decision that we've already talked about. Uh, the fund growth and start of the million dollars. Uh, we're investing productively eight hundred ninety-one thousand dollars of that. If we move ten percent of earnings over, we we move them out of the earnings into the fund growth. Uh, if the fund itself is growing at three percent, we have the same almost yeah the same three percent twenty-six seven thirty. So we've got. 2.94% under that scenario, where we're paying out all of the earnings except the 10%. And that would be, that would be the plan, the plan A. Uh, if, we, if we split the difference, it would be something in between the returns shown for fees charged to earnings. It'd be uh, somewhere in the order of 2% versus maybe three and a half percent growth in the fund. So I'd, I'd, I'd appreciate any feedback you can give us on the reality of these numbers, because all it is is something to, to shoot at and, and, and work, work towards something that's more meaningful. Sure. Um, uh, just speaking to the assumptions there at the top with the 3% earnings and the 3% uh, fund growth, um, I think long term, that is that is uh, a reasonable um, assumption. Uh, uh, long term, looking at it, um, looking at it shorter term, I think there you have a bit of a headwind with where interest rates are, like you alluded to with the interest rate on cash. Um, interest rates on bonds are still relatively low. Um, we do have the Federal Reserve raising interest rates, so it looks like they're heading in the right direction finally and getting the, the yields up. Um, so I think long term, a more normalized, especially a more normalized bond or fixed income environment, ab absolutely those, I would agree with your assumptions. Yeah, how, how about as far as the, the, the fund growth itself? What's uh, Again, using at the you're talking about at the three percent level. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think long term. So you're talking about six percent total return right. all in. Right. Um, Bef before fees and come out of that. So, okay, so gross gross return. Gross gross return. Uh, long term, um, I think that's uh, that's an achievable goal. Um, but you, but again, you have to. You have to look at this as long term as well because um, we've had a, a market environment where we've had eight, nine years of positive returns, no recession. Um, I'm not saying that we're going to have a market downturn tomorrow, but probably within the next one today. <laughs> we, yeah, the market, we finally had a decline in the market and we, we really hadn't, haven't had one since, uh, since November. But, um, but easily in the next year to three years, we could see a, a, you know, a more significant market decline. Um, so we are towards the, the end of the, the cycle. Um, so you gotta, taking valuations into effect and, and looking at everything, you have to kind of look at our return going forward isn't gonna be as great as if we were just coming out of the bottom. Um, but I think long-term over full market cycles, it's, it's an achievable number. Okay. Okay, thanks. Okay, we have four plans that we have to, to look at. Plan A has been discussed. Ernie is recommending that. Plan B is what they're, they're uh, putting forth. Is there any more discussion on this? Ernie. Well, I'd just like to say, if you look at not particular situation, I would say if you look at plan B, or plan C, uh, you're looking at a, already a, a $470 deficit in the interest account, which we don't really have. So we, we're going to have to take those dollars from somewhere because we spend those totally spend those dollars every year. So if we're running a deficit, how do we take money from something we don't have to pay for something? I think the way we Unless we want to change how we're budgeting our monies, 
in supporting the uh, where these dollars go. I, I just think that Plan A uh, is, is basically one way to build logic to me. Michael? Uh, if we adopt whatever plan we adopt tonight, if we go down the road a year or two, three years down, can we change it if we find we've made the wrong choice? Absolutely. Will the situations change? Absolutely. Absolutely. So we're not locked into any particular. No, you're not. No. Budget committee, any comments? Call for a motion if someone's willing. We'll move that we adopt plan A. Alpha. And second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? Further? Those in favor? I guess so. I don't know enough about it to be dangerous. <laughs> I think Ernie's point is that this is all attention about what we do. Oh, yeah. yeah. Plus, the <laughs> fact we can't change this, it becomes onerous. Yeah. Yeah. Well, interest rates we want to transfer. Yeah. Howard. Okay, the only thing that I would then ask you for is um, permission, whatever, or endorsement, whatever, to rewrite the policy statements which we've made relative to the trust funds to reflect that decision because it's not what is reflected in the statements that we have been been dealing with over the last number of number of months. Um, and I'd be happy to rewrite those and present them in a way that then you can officially adopt them and sign them and whatever you do with your process of processing the policies. Um, but but I think we really need to clean that up because the language is is clearly I different. That. I think we've got it one of us. We can't have <coughs> Jack? Yeah, when it comes to that language, I don't know where we stand as of the moment. But we had in draft form in that language that the uh, only only a quarter of the funds could be spent during the first quarter of the year. Well, that's and, and I don't think that's necessary one bit because the 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 procedure that is is outlined says that the the uh, the funding will be based on the previous year. So that's already established at the beginning of the year. I don't see what this quarterly business that applies to the rest of the town budget has anything to do with what we're doing with the trust funds. Howard? <coughs> the cemetery does not have that wording in it, and, it's, and I concur totally it's not necessary. Okay. Guptal and D.C. Stevens for enrichment, not the academic award, but D.C. Stevens for enrichment and D.C. St and um, Guptal are both <coughs> monies which the school has of it, it, monies which are made available to the school. If the school wants to spend any money between January first and town meeting, which is when we approve the amount of money that can be spent from the funds, my understanding, and Melanie straighten me out if I'm wrong, my understanding is that <clears throat> none of that money can be spent until after it's approved by town meeting, which is the same reason why we have to do the thing for the town. If the town wants to spend any money between January 1st and town meeting, we have to have the clause in there for the, for the next year. And so for Guptal and for D.C. Stevens and Richmond, we would have to do the same wording or we would have to inform the school that they can't spend any money until after town meeting when the town has officially approved the expenditures from the previous year's income. Okay, is this a, Ho a Howard Hollinger effort or is this a budget committee effort? The, well, to rewrite these. To rewrite them? Yes. Oh, uh, to reflect the, uh, the way we're going to uh, uh, do the uh, or pay the the uh, Bar Harbor and I, I would argue that it's a select board <laughs> it's, well, <laughs> statement. I mean, you just you just made the decision as to which which way you wanted that's to handle. Exactly right. Yes. Okay. And I, and, and what I'm saying you're going to rewrite those. Right. To but, reflect that decision. But Jack's question was relative to the 25 the, the yep, yep, expenditures yep. of money from January to 
Yes. March, and that's a reflection of my conversations with Melanie. And if that's not right, Melanie, then square me away. And I was under that impression that you had to get permission. Pardon me? You, I was under the impression that you had to get permission from the legislative body to spend that money. And that's how we've been doing it in the past. So I don't, I, I don't, I didn't feel like that was my decision or the budget committee's decision. It was a directive from the way the treasurer said we have, we have to handle it. That's it, Jack. Yeah, I, I still believe that that money, the limit of that money is established by the first report that comes out at the beginning of the year based on what the fund has produced last year. <clears throat> I don't see what that has to do with the town budget. This is something quite different. But I do think it's, it needs to be very plain how the process of withdrawing the funds according to that procedure works. Who contacts, who from Belgrade contacts the bank to draw, <coughs> draw the funds? And is the approval uh, done through the town select board's warrant process? I think that needs to be established clearly. I mean, yeah, Michael. Yeah, I think definitely has to go through the warrant process. We may direct the town manager to contact the bank and make a withdrawal or transfer or whatever happens. But it would go through this board would approve that action. I only ask that because it hasn't been working that way, and I, I think that's the way it should work. Yeah, true. Well, we made a lot of corrections this year. So, I don't know, that's the way I see it. I don't know. Okay, yeah. We have um, our municipal resolution we can give you, and you can um, use this form. I can send it to you in Word format, and you can spell out who you want us to take instructions from and... I, I can give that to you tonight, or I can email it to Carrie and Melanie in the morning, whatever works. But it might simplify, it tells us, you know, who gets statements, who can make inquiries to the bank, who can authorize distributions, um, and who's authorized to open and close accounts and all of that. Yeah, if you would, if you would email that to, to Carrie, that would be good. I'd be happy to. Yes. I also had a conversation with Carrie back a while ago, and the <clears throat> understanding that I have, and maybe this is something that you've got to make a, again, another, have another vote about, <clears throat> but my understanding is that Carrie's directive is that the monies that are made available for D.C. Stevens and Guptill <clears throat> are governed by, first, the committees at the school that request the funds, the town then approving the expenditure of those funds and then the monies to pay for whatever they've been allowed to do or approved to do would come from the town and, and bills would be paid by the town as opposed to a situation, a scenario where we would say, well, the, the school can then contact Bar Harbor and say they want $500. They would, they would be doing it through the town office, and the town office would be paying the, and accounting for the monies that are expended by those, by those beneficiaries. How has this run in the past? Do we know? Yeah. Yes. I mean, it's a it little bit of... Yeah. It is that way. Well, it well, it is that way, except for the fact that there was a bunch of money. It's over $1,000, and I don't have the number right on the top of my head, that has been sitting in a bank account at the school for the Guptill Fund. And nobody knew what, what the deal was with how it was supposed to be handled, and we've got, we've got that handled this year. That's been taken care of. But, <clears throat> so there, there been, there's been some confusion about, <clears throat> you know, does Kerry want the people at the school to have the bill sent to the town? Do you want to have the school pay the bill and then reimburse the school? And I don't know, you know, some of those details, I was looking to Carrie and Melanie to, to uh, specify. Okay, Ernie, we, we can work that out. We give the directions to the town manager as to how those dollars are going to be handled. So rather than have a big discussion about that tonight, 
the procedure has been the town manager who can instruct the treasurer. Those are the two people that would have access, I'm assuming, in the future to the bank, and those would be the only two people. And as to how the billing is done, I would leave it up to those people and come back to us to authorize that to work that way. Okay. And that would be all taken care of. But we, it's a good point, and it's good to have to have it discussed in the way it's been <coughs> done in the past has caused some, caused some confusions. And this time, we're getting off on right foot, and we will work that process. And I guess, did, we get a, did you get a copy of that already? We'll take a copy tonight, I guess, and you want to send it to us. I'll be Mr. Jack, while we're on the process of cleaning up loose ends and how this is handled, I would think it would be very important that the town office has on record a current list of the people or organizations who are authorized to receive monies from the town. And I'm thinking particularly of some of these smaller, these smaller uh, accounts that are part of the unified investment account. Uh, the capital. Who, who is who is entitled to receive that money? I, I'm not asking for an answer now, but who is entitled to receive it? Who is entitled to receive money from the Reco the, the Lacroix fund and so forth? Because we do have those as individual accounts listed under the Unified Trust account. Do we have that, Karen? Is that, do we have a list of those who can receive? The, um, all I have is what's in the trust policies that Howard reworked. And I do know that um, I was unaware of the money that was sitting at the school until Howard and I talked about it. But as far as the D.C. Stevens Enrichment Fund for the school, that is the process and how it, how it works. They send us a requisition, we reimburse the individual teachers. There are two committees at the school, one for Gupta, one for Stevens. Mm -hmm. And the cemetery is money that just goes through the general. Right, goes through the general. That's, that takes care of Yetton and Delcroix and the cemetery. Okay. I don't see anything we're going to act on other than what direction we've given you, so I'd like to go ahead and move on unless there's some very pertinent conversation. Then we'll move on. The only, may I Thank ask you, Mark. May I ask one other question to Bar Harbor? <clears throat> what is your projection, once the dust settles, so to speak, for how much cash you hold in the account? Um, <clears throat> What's your target? Uh, typically, it's uh, with a portfolio, it's anywhere from 3 to 5%. Um, that will fluctuate uh, a little bit and increase from time to time. And there's really two ways that the cash can increase in the portfolio. Uh, one is when we hold individual bonds on the fixed income side. So when a bond matures, we're going to get a, a, a slug of cash. We might not necessarily put that to work right away. And that's because we're looking for a bond that fits your portfolio and fits your needs. So if there's nothing available on the market, we're going to be very strategic and we might hold off from investing those funds until a bond becomes available that we like and that's appropriate for your portfolio. Um, so you could see cash build from time to time. Um, and that's kind of what's going on now with the higher cash position. We still do need to buy a couple of bonds. It's been a very difficult uh, bond environment, so we have been very selective with what we've been purchasing. Um, but that cash will continue to come down. Uh, the other area where we could see a buildup in cash is on the stock side or the equity side. So, um, and it typically happens when we see a, a significant market pullback or pullback in the market. Uh, we have what is called as our, our stop loss strategy or our exit strategy. And basically for each individual stock position, um, if it falls by 25% uh, from its most recent high point, at that point in time, we take a look at the holding and usually we sell the holding. So for example, say we bought Apple stock at $50 a share, it goes to 100, then it drops to 75, it's dropped by 25%. At that point in time, we would most likely sell to, to lock in the gains. Um, and in a big market pullback, we do sell out of a lot of names and the cash does build. 
Um, but that is, again, temporary. Uh, and we look to reinvest as the pullback subsides. But your goal is, is something under 10%? In, in yeah, well, we're fully invested, yeah, typically between okay. 3 and 5, usually. Thank you. All right. Any other questions? Mar Harbor, any comments for us? Questions for them? Thank you for coming. Thank you. We appreciate it. Thank you. We appreciate your advice. As long as it's good. <laughs> well, it's, it is what it is. All right, let's move on into new business. We have a board uh, and committee appointments. Uh, the first appointment is Joe Adlam. I believe that is on recreation committee. I'll make Parks and Rec. It's been moved. Do I hear a second? Yes. Seconded. That Joe be reappointed to that position. Any discussion? All those in favor, please. Unanimous. Wayne H. Farman, or Farnham on the Library uh, Board of Trustees. Is this a reappointment or is this new? No. I'm, filling out, I'm filling out an existing term. Okay. I'll make that move. And it's been moved. Second. And seconded. Is there any discussion? All those in favor, please. Thank you. Diane Wright, she stepped down the term, so Dwayne is finishing out the term. The term ends at the December of this year. And Zygmunt Stresnowski, how did I do on that? Okay. I did? Not really good. <laughs> <laughs> close enough. Yeah. Close enough. Close enough. You won't be okay. shocked. On the Library Board of Trustees, this is first term. I'll make that motion. I'll second. And moved to second it. Any discussion? All those in favor? <laughs> See, it was the first, first uh, youth member of the board. Craig Alexander for the Dams Committee. Make that motion. I'll second that. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor? Peter Rushton for the Planning Board. I'll make that motion. This is a reappointment, I believe. Yes. Yeah. Been moved. Do I hear a second? So I move the second that he be appointed. Any discussion? All those in favor, please raise. Thank you. And we have completed that. I think you have a spelling issue on one name. Yes. The I should be an E in my last name. The first I. The first I. Hey, I had a hard time saying it. <laughs> well, that, 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 would have been because easier. you spelled wrong on your page. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. His name right. Okay. Thank you, gentlemen. And thank you all for volunteering to be on these committees. It's not an easy thing to get people to come in and say they're going to, they're going to serve on these committees. So you're really, really appreciated by the town and by us. So thanks a bunch. Thank you. Do you want to say Do you want to? Uh, swear in tonight? Yeah. Can you do it all at one time? Yeah. If you'd all go with uh, the young man, he will swear him in. Thank you. 
it has been, it's been shut down. Yeah. Yeah. We have to have some power in there for something. Yeah. But it's not it's not a terrible yeah, so it's pretty minimal. Yeah. 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 I think they shut those vents off too. Did they? Uh, my my thought on it is that uh, we dropped it already from one fifty to one twenty five. <clears throat> this is the beginning of the what typically is a hot sales season. Uh, there, in her letter, she mentioned that there was some interest. Uh, somebody was looking into the uh, right of way. One, certain, one person seems pretty interested in checking with Maine on the right of way. And, um, I think DOT has said they would give that right of way up. Yes, and so I, 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 I just, yeah. there was a price point. I, I feel like if we if we drop it to 99, Chances, chances are, if we, we stay at 125, um, we could, you know, perhaps entertain an offer. Uh, Absolutely. And, and, it, and it could be 100,000. Could be could be 99. Who knows? But it, uh, but if we drop it to 99 and we entertain an offer, then that could or be 80,000. That's right. I mean, and I just feel like uh, if we're in the same position. <clears throat> Um, say August, September. Six months from now. Then I think we we, we, we should move to, to sell it, but I, I, or to to drop it. But I, I'd like to give it a little extra time because we did drop like twenty five thousand already. I agree with him. So I agree. That's my. Everybody in agreement? Yeah, I think that's one of the questions you can ask Gail of how she sees the season. You know, is is Ernie on track? Where is? I'm. I'm I agree with Ernie and Ernie. <laughs> it's well, I, I do too, but I'm not, I'm not a professional realtor, so I don't know that, that you know, on a commercial profit. Well, in, in, in general, I, I would think that, you know. I think she wants to come in and talk to us, that's fine. Yeah, that's right now, that's what we like ask, to do. Ask her that question. I just, if I, I mean, we're back almost done. If we took the 99, we're right back down where Dave's real estate came in and told us. That's what it ought to go yeah. for. Mm -hmm. So we're almost right back to that picture. Yeah. We took these other guys that said they were going to make us yeah. make the town some money on it. And we, we, we may wind up at 99 for anyway. But you've got to have something to negotiate with. Yeah, I mean, that's 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 if in their letter she said there was absolutely no interest, we haven't shown it to anybody, nobody said a thing that anyone wants to. Absolutely. Then I'd say we'd have to move it. Move we table it. I mean, she could come and you know, see. Let's have a motion on the floor to table this. There's a second. Any any more discussion? All those in favor? It's tabled. Newsletter policy. I read it over. I have one question. It says the organization submitting the article must be located within Belgrade's geographic boundaries. What if the organization has influence within Belgrade but is not located necessarily within geographic boundaries? I mean, there are organizations that have influence in Belgrade that aren't necessarily in Belgrade. I guess I'm asking another example. Yeah. Uh, how about our, our lake friends? A number of them aren't in Belgrade, okay. but they, they have an influence in what we do here. Yeah. Okay. So I would think that if there's if they have some sort of a uh, uh, of an influence in Belgrade, we would allow them to use the newsletter if it was appropriate. That's one of the examples I couldn't make for the same thing. But that's the only thing that I have. Is there any more discussion on this? I've got a little bit. Yes. First of all, I want to know where this came from. You know, all of a sudden it appeared that night after the meeting. Did three of you guys okay this? No, nobody's okay as far as I know. So how did we get a policy without it coming to us? Oh, it's not a policy yet. Well, I know, but yeah. even a draft. How did we get that? You know, this is a team here, not a one-man show. Or two-man show. It takes three people. Make something like this happen, and I just, I just. I think Carrie was asked to put something together that we could look at. By who? By us. Yeah, but it was we only did it that night, and we got the policy the same night. 
So somebody went ahead, and this is what I don't want to be happening. That's where I'm out of the friggin' loop, and that makes me mad. And I'll tell you, I'm going to push it if it keeps happening. I think in this particular case, I don't know if any, I didn't ask, I don't know if anybody else asked or not, but it was, it was based on Ernie's letter that there was a lot of kickback, so we needed some sort of a policy. That's we true. talked about it at, at the meeting, and I think Carrie had this and had it jammed up because of that. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's not it's not in effect at all. It's just a draft. The other thing I got about it is I didn't see a place, and I read it over. I don't see a place for the select board's spot. It's got everybody else's, but shouldn't there be a place for the select people to voice their opinion? Or voice their whatever, however you want to put it. I mean, if you go through all this, I don't see this select board on And I just think there ought to be a select board corner, you know. Mm -hmm. Besides that, I really don't have a problem with it, except how it got it to us. And is this something somebody made up, or is it a copy from somebody else? This is a policy I got from... Okay, it's, you know what? I think it's you tell me the story. It's a generic... Uh, yeah. Okay. That's kind of what I thought after I read it, but yeah. I'm going, wow, that was pretty fast to come up with all that. Uh, I just, I hear what Rick's saying, Rick is right. But, uh, it, and it, it's a good thing that we have this. In Baltimore, when we, when, when there's going to be, especially a new policy, it has to be. Three people on this board has to say, town manager, we want this policy drafted. And this is kind of, we have a little bit of discussion what we're looking to accomplish. This was something that blew up because I used one sentence in my comment, which I didn't know, the town manager didn't know, and he got put out there and we got took him to task for it. So this was done to correct that situation. So the draft was thrown together, I believe. I and mean, I'm just defending the town manager a little bit here, right? Because the situation was already before us, and she was just trying to help us out. And it's not, you're absolutely, Rick is absolutely right. <coughs> There's a policy. It doesn't matter who, whether it's me, Ernie, whoever, you don't go in and say, town manager, please draft this up. It has to be something of a request from this board. That's what we need to nip in the That's all he's trying to say. Yeah. Not, yeah. Not yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> well, Augie. Thank you. I, uh, I see uh, this is just a template. Uh, I mean, we want to change it, right? No. If we want to change it, we can change But I would rather look at something to work with than to have a white paper here and have us try to run that. I hear you. But that's not even the point. Yeah. The point is, We've got a lady in the audience that's just tearing the yeah. new one. Yeah. You know what? Sure. And all of a sudden, at the end of the meeting, this comes out and front us. And I'm going, how could this come up so quick without somebody asking to have this? Now, I may be guilty here because I do remember <coughs> saying to Carrie that don't we have a policy for that newsletter? Well, if you are, you're at fault. I, I'll, I'll take it. <laughs> I'll be the guy. I guess. I can just, Everybody can hit no, me on the I just, way out. I just want to try to get his own keel. I got you. I got you. You want to be the dead horse, but you did make that statement. Yeah. But this draft <coughs> was already before us. Sorry. We didn't have it. And we should, at that point, we should have requested it. That's all Rick is saying. Yeah, I got it. Yep. That's I beat this have been I don't want to. No. It was, hey, it, I'm just no, stating the fact that what I'd like to there say. Is, there is a proper procedure. We don't, the town manager just doesn't. Do a policy without us requesting. Right. So. Okay, back to the policy. Have we got problems with it? Do we? Um, I was going to say, Mike had dropped off some uh, editorial comments. I can't remember what they were. One day this week, but um, under the purpose, um, it should say in that second line, uh, in Belgrade residents, an opportunity. To publish information regarding governmental and community items of public and educational interest. I think that's what you were trying to say there. Yeah. Oh, of general public interest, that's what it was. And then um, the draft of the bulletin needs to go before the board for approval prior to publication. I have
have a note here to add select for and under um, that Rick just said. Didn't that say that in some place before that it has to be approved by ask reports? I thought I read that in there. Yeah, it says you have final editorial control. Right. <coughs> I think I just wanted that clarified to say that the draft, you guys have to go through a draft before. I added select board to the bulleted list. Have we, have we historically done that? No. We have not. No. We've never had a spot for us. No, no, I mean, have we historically reviewed it before it went no. out? Has the select board done that? No. I don't remember seeing it. I think when it first started, we may have looked at it just to see what it was, how it was set up, and somebody ran through it. But uh, I haven't seen it again. Right? Uh, you know, the, the purpose of this here again is the newsletter. It's a newsletter, and again, I think if we, re if we at least take a look at it, it cost us money, and we're limited. It sounds like to ten pages, so uh, we, we should make sure that. Whoever is putting stuff in there that is very limited and only takes out a certain amount of space. So I think since we're signing off on the expense of the newsletter, I think we should be making sure that it matches what we feel should be going out there, not slipping something else in there that maybe shouldn't be. Yeah, I think the, the organizations that are putting things in should be limited to amount of space. The last, I think it was the last one, the news of town report. The historical study of four or five pages. That's crazy in my opinion. Yeah, that, that, that's why I think we need to. I mean, we all, we all, again, this is something that we've never really had to deal with in the past. But we do now, and it's a good thing it all happened. So we just need to make sure we get the most out of the space and that the town government. Gets their message to the people. That's top priority. This is the town newsletter, and then everything else in there. They got all the fun scope of the towns. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna say that was um, two other things Mike had pointed out to uh, limit editorial comments to one page for whichever organization, department, whatever um, was submitting the article, and then. Um, as far as the advertising, the, the size of the ads, or the business card size. So. And it also would be good to have group on one page instead of both of them. Especially this last one, the one on the front page. Was the see. advertising paid for the uh, newsletter? No. I it's not. I asked that before. Six yeah, it's only $60 a year on there. Yeah. Yeah. And it's $60, there's, there's no difference in size? Yeah. Well, business size card. It's supposed to be a business card. Yeah. yeah. So there is a size. Nice. Yeah. Brilliant. So, right. And then the other thing I did was I took a little editorial liberty and I um, cut the distribution down to three times a year instead of the four. And I tried to hit those critical points um, the end of February because everybody's getting ready for town meeting. And then the beginning of June so we get all the summer people. And then the beginning of September. So. But instead of the four, just because it's... I take three times in the year of planning. Mm -hmm. Augie, um, as far as uh, like a select person's corner, right, I'd like to think that the select board sort of works in tandem with the town manager and so that when we review this prior to uh, publication, um, if we wanted to add anything to her description of what's going on in the town in relation to this board. We can just do that at that time and instead of having, I don't think we need to have like a, a town manager's report and a select board report because she kind of um, is our public town manager. Yeah, she is our town manager, yeah. so let's, uh, let's use her. And, uh, <coughs> Mike Beach, yeah. You may want to say the same thing. I, mean. I, I, I was going to say that the town manager's report, I think, is worthwhile. She frequently talks about things that we don't necessarily, as a slate board, doesn't necessarily we get into it perhaps, but we don't necessarily mm -hmm. uh, put it out there for the town. Uh, she talks about some of the operation type issues. And uh, to me, her, her select person, uh, town manager's report is worthwhile. And I would also, on, on, I agree with what you're saying, Rick, about having some space for the select board, selectmen, but I think it should be the select 
board. Absolutely. Should be, if we put something in there, there should be at least the majority of us sort of agreed on what it is. And, uh, I think if it's, if it's something specific that needs to be detailed, uh, would that make sense? Okay. Correct, sure. We may never use it, but I think it just ought to be an option in there that sure. we could. Sure. That's all I'm looking for. Yeah. Yeah. We may never put a thing in. Right. My kid on it should be off limits to what I did. Period. It has to be three select board members, read that and approve it. That got done and normally would have checked with the rest of the board, but it's done because it was going to be printed right off. So we need that in there. I think that, you know, I can't write another thing in there because I'm a select person. It should be something that comes from this select board. You just said from, a board, from the board. That's what we need. At least that way, three of us. At least okay, so Carrie, you have the kind of marching orders? I do. So you're going to rewrite that and then you'll present it later. should be the board when you put something like that in all. We yeah. see it to yeah. either yay or nay. And pretty simple. All right. We're going to move on to the warrant. Can somebody please read the warrant? We've got to approve this. No. Oh, she's going to rewrite it and resubmit it. So we're going to table this until the next meeting. Uh, do we need to table it? No, it's just a draft. Yeah. Okay. We haven't done anything with it okay. except make changes. Warrant number 36. $50,333.69. Make that motion. I'll second it. That's the Bangles. Any discussion on that? Um. <laughs> Was that the, uh, that's the one that's in the book, right? Was that the separate one? That's a separate, no, that's a, that's that's a separate, separate one, one, I guess, to pay off the fire truck. Oh, it's a payment for the 2011 general obligation bond for the Salt San Chad and the Fire Department. Yeah. Oh, okay. And the second one is the payment for the 2016 road. Yeah. Any discussion? <coughs> Question. Uh, item 118, B and B embroidery. No, we're not on that one. 36. This one. <laughs> this is, this is, that's what I was on the show. That's what it's that's it. Fifty thousand. I've got, a, I've got a motion <coughs> and a second to accept that warrant. <coughs> Any more discussion? All those in favor? Thank you. Second warrant. Warrant article, I mean warrant 35. $399,910.26. This has to do with the roads, paving roads. Has to do with what now? Paving the roads. Paving the roads. Okay. Next. I'll make that motion. Motion's made. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? No. No. It's not this, is a, this is a payment on the road. This is the second. <laughs> yeah, the second. That's not we'll in. get you in a minute. Yeah, <laughs> okay. I have Tell a motion to accept and a second. Any discussion? If none, all those in favor? Here we go. And it's one. Right. Now you can in a minute. Warrant 33. $21,350.42. Ask for it. I'll make that motion. Second. Well, second. Any discussion? I'm going to, you know, let it go now. <laughs> Michael. Hey. I changed my no, uh, <laughs> He's forgotten now. <laughs> no, I mean, uh, 118, b and embroidery for the... Uh, That's the one I had. Okay, well, what are we embroidering for the transfer station? It's um, included with clothing. It's, some of it's embroidered, but it's the fluorescent clothing and fluorescent jackets that they purchased. Uh, and then you put transfer station on them. Okay, that's just the name of the company. Right, yeah. it's not. Okay. I told you that. Uh, I could be wrong on this, but number 395 and 107, it kind of look, it, it, we're paying for snow, it looks like we're paying snow removed, paying Morris to remove snow at the center and we're paying to a hollow. Is that all that the camera would say? Actually? Two different places. Two what? Two different places. I didn't, we did not tell me. Okay, I'll sit in the lakes. I'll okay. help you out on that one. I'm sure. Yeah, thank you. Well, I'm sure. <coughs> I, I, I got a question. Gregory. Oh, oh, he's not done. Uh, go ahead. Overhead garage door. Uh, didn't we pay for that already? Has it been damaged again at the salt shed? I don't believe we paid it already. We waited for a while to get the, and we have another one sitting there for, I think, the transfer station. I know it's been more. Yeah, yes. For overhead yeah. door? Yeah. I think that was at the uh, facilities garage. Yeah, it was at the same I don't think it was at the same I thought it was too. Mm -hmm. 
But this is, this is, this is, well, it's $200. Dollars. If it's at one and only time, I would pay it, that's fine, but I just, uh, I remember that. I think you're right. I think I remember it too. It may have been a year or so ago too. Any more discussion on this warrant? Yes. Quick. On the first page, uh, 120, and it looks like all of these. Uh, how come they're du duplicated, I guess? 60 Open Road, 60 Open Road. It's a two different? They had two deliveries in February. One of them was okay. 79.5 no. gallons of propane, the other one was 99.9. .9. That's fine. Yeah. That's it. That answers my question. I just thought maybe it was getting paid twice. It's happened before. It's, I noticed in a couple other places, but I'm fine. Because it was five weeks of February. So. Yep, I got you. You're fine. Any more questions on the warrants? Seeing none, I do all those in favor? Well, yeah. Yeah. Right. All right. You, said, you said that other place, D&D &D embroidery. B&B. &B. B &B. Well, if you go down here to DJ's Municipal Sign Company, it says safety vest here. Mm -hmm. Is it D&D &D just the ones that puts the name on it, huh? It looks like there's two safety vests mm -hmm. and a two way radio. What's I guess the one? You can replace a broken two way radio. So, BD embroidery, there was a jack of the reflective taping in the transfer station logo on the left chest. T shirts, some more t shirts, more t shirts, more t shirts, and a hooded sweatshirt. So that was all in B and B. And what was the other one? DJ's municipal. That's fine. If that's what it is, it's fine. All the um, DJ's municipal supply also had a two way radio unit and some safety vests <coughs> and a jacket. Any more questions on the warrants? Seeing that. All those in favor? Unanimous. Town manager's report. So I have um, Mr. Harkin's resignation from um, the budget committee and the board of appeals. Who's resigning again? Mr. Oh. Merkin. Oh, yeah. Okay. Now that we have a motion, is it seconded? It's seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor? He's off. No, he's on. He's in trouble now. Those are easy. Go ahead, town manager. Um, I sent an email to our auditor uh, regarding Jack's comments at town meeting about the balance from the reserve accounts. <coughs> Excuse me, not being in the short report. Um, she did respond and say that the totals are there, but they're just uh, in Schedule B and C, but not broken out. That's the purpose of the short report. Um, she did state, however, that the full audit will be done uh, hopefully by the end of this week or next week, and they will be submitting that along with the management letter. Um, Ernie Martin is going to be here at the next meeting on April 4th to discuss the post office and the land and I have notified Pat Donahue, so he would be prepared to come. And, um, I'm not sure if he's going to redo this presentation or not, but I did email that stuff to Ernie, so he has it. Um, and the other thing is, and I let the um, people, I keep on calling the village people, but I know that's not right. <laughs> I did let them know as well. Um, the other thing is, I've been trying to read through this um, 